Alright, so this video will be an introduction to JavaScript DOM events, its syntax and how you can set them up. Now, events are all over the place. When you interact with web pages, certain events are being fired up on certain user actions. Common events on the browser would include events that fire on page load, when a button is clicked, when you hover over an element, when you submit a form on your or when you press down on your key. Example is this slide.com website I'm using. When I press the left arrow key, an event is being fired that changes the slides for me. When I press the right arrow key, the slides also change. This type of events are called key press events. Now, the whole point about events is makes the website more interactive and more fun. All right, let's head on to um, the different ways we can assign events to an element. You can assign events through inline event handlers or event handler properties and the last one event listeners. We're going to go over all three methods and ensure that you are familiar with each and every event and how they can be triggered. Their pros and your cons. Alright, so let's get to it. Inline event handlers. Let's start with a basic example that consists of a button and a paragraph element. Now, what we want is when the user clicks on the button, it changes the text content of the paragraph. Now, directly on the button, we're going to add an attribute on click with a value of change text. The change text is a function, it's a JavaScript function. We're adding it directly to our HTML markup. In our JavaScript, we're going to create that function, change text, and we're going to select the paragraph element and change its text content. So let's go preview with my code pen. So we're going to start writing our function, change text. You can select paragraph element. I'm going to use query selector. Since we're changing text content, We're going to change the text content to be I change because of an event handler. Just that. And we are done with our function. And we can preview and test. Did you notice that? Immediately we clicked on the button, the paragraph element changed. So that is an example of inline event handlers. We first of all add an attribute with a value of a function change text. And then we create that function change text. We select the element we want to work with and then what we want to do. We could also do something where instead of changing the text content of the paragraph we can change the background color of the body to do that we would want to select the body select the body select the style of the body and then we select the background and we give it a color say red What this will do is when we click the button, it's gonna select the body and then it add it's gonna add the red background to it. You can preview here. Yeah. See that's exactly what happened. So that is an example, a good example of inline event handlers. The next we're going to look at event handler properties. This works very similar to an inline event handler, except that we're setting the property of an element in JavaScript instead of the attribute in the HTML. As you can see, we have a button and we have a paragraph. And we have a function to modify the text content of the paragraph. To change text, we select the paragraph. We're changing text content to this. 
that's the function change text and next we add an event handler as a property so what we do is we select the button we add the event handler property on click and we give it the function change text what this does is once the button that we selected is clicked because of this event handler it triggers this function change text that changes the text content of the paragraph we can easily preview it here on our code pen all right so first things first the function change text select paragraph text content would be this document the query selector button on click change text oh we would want to remove this attribute because we don't need it anymore okay we're all set to test there that happened click the button paragraph text change note event handlers do not follow the camel case convention that you know most javascript code adheres to so rather than saying on click with a camel case we just did normal on click because if we want to change this to camel case like this it's not going to work we're not going to be able to trigger the function see it doesn't work so camel case is not going to be useful in event handler properties and another thing you want to note is when passing a function reference to the on click property we're not going to include the parentheses this is the function change text but we're not including the parentheses because we are not invoking the function in that exact moment we're only passing a reference to the function now, this method of adding events to elements is much more maintainable than the inline event handler but it still suffers some slight problems for example trying to set multiple separate unclean properties will cause all but the last one to be overwritten what that means is we have an on click document the button on click change text let's say we created another function to change the background color to function change background this function changes the background so document select body the body Let's start the background. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with my fingers anymore. They're not doing what I want them to do. That. So, this function, change background, changes the background color of the body. So, let's say we add another on click event. But this time around, we're doing change background. There. And what that would do is it triggers the last function. This hasn't changed. We're only making use of this last event handler. So that's one of the disadvantages of using event handler properties because you cannot add multiple event handlers to a single element. It's not gonna work. Moving on, we go to the next method of adding events, which would be the event listeners. To add an event listener, we use a method called add event listener. It takes two mandatory parameters, or three actually. The element that we're adding the event listener to, type of event listener and a callback function. Let's look at the example I have here. With our button, click me, and the paragraph, I will change. We first of all create a function, change text. As Elias said, we select the paragraph and we're changing the text content. The next thing this will do is we add the event handler property. So we select the element that would want the event listener to be added to document the query selector button I'm using a query selector add event listener and then the event listener itself click meaning when we click on button 
do something and the callback function would be change text meaning when we click on our button trigger the function change text our function change text changes text content so let's go preview with code pen all right we probably don't need the css part so i'm just gonna uh minimize that okay so like i said earlier the function change text and the only thing different from the event handler property is that we're adding an event listener method rather than an on click property so we have document request select the button event listener click change text review and there you have it Now, the advantage this has over the event handler property is that you can add multiple event listeners to the same um, element. You can add multiple event listeners to the same element. So let's do that um, trick we do with the background color. Let's add a function. Let me just give it color. That will change the background color of the body. So this function color will change the background color of the body. So we're going to give it another event listener. This time around, color. So we have two event listeners. Click to change the text and click to change the color. If we do preview, both changed. The text changed, the background color changed. So that is one advantage event listeners have over event handler properties and that is a basic example of event listeners so to summarize we have learned about inline event handlers event handler properties and event listeners using click events but there are many more events in javascript particularly mdn reference list has over 300 different events if they have added more and uh, i'm going to leave a link to the MDN event reference so you could check it out. In the meantime we're going to I'm going to show you a little bit of mouse events. Mouse over mouse out events. So we're going to be working with our button. First of all let me create a variable for the button so that I won't have to select button every single time I want to use it. so that is the variable for a button next we're going to select the button and then add an event listener to it so we can select button add event listener mouse over now I've not written I didn't write a function for that I'm just going to use an unnamed function to show you a different method of how we could you know use the callback function so this function will change the background color of the button whenever we take our mouse over it so uh, we can have this dot style of background equals red and why you're using red oh red so whenever we take our mouse over the button this function will trigger which will change the background color of the button to red there now notice when we take our mouse away from it it doesn't change back because this isn't a hover effect no we're not hovering we're changing the background color to red now, we can create another event listener mouse out to change the ground color back to white we can do that i'm not going to waste my time writing the code for that i'm just going to copy this 
and change this to mouse out that's the type of event listener that will change the background color back to white so what this will do is we we'll take our mouse to the element it changes to red when we take it out it changes back to white and take it to red so this kind of creates like a hover effect that we do when we are using CSS um, selectors and um, attributes and all of that. So we have our simple mouse over and mouse out events to red and to white. That takes us back to DOM events. And to reiterate, we have different types of ways we can add events to elements. We have the inline event listeners, event handler properties, and event listeners. Now, to conclude, events are actions that take place in a website by clicking, hovering, submitting a form, loading a page, pressing a key. And with DOM events, JavaScript becomes more interactive and dynamic, and we're able to make our websites respond to users and, you know, make everything just more interesting. So there you have it, guys. This concludes our video on DOM events. Thank you very much.